We have a really exciting episode of Everything Except the Law to share with you today. But first, I want to quickly tell you about James Marketing Amplifier. James Marketing Amplifier is an affordable marketing service that amplifies every stage of your client life cycle. They know that lawyers don't have enough time to dedicate to marketing, so their Amplifier program does the work for you. They create top-notch custom content and videos to generate more leads, convert those leads to clients, and stay top of mind with past clients to obtain more referrals. When you become an Amplifier subscriber, you'll start growing your collection of marketing videos every month with a quick 30-minute Zoom session where they record several videos that they edit and post to your website and social media. They also shoot, edit, and post high-value client testimonial videos for you. They also supply you with a large collection of proven marketing content that can be automatically sent to your prospects or past clients. You receive a 100 to 300 page branded book, dozens of educational booklets, a monthly eight page client newsletter, a shock and awe package, lead nurturing emails, a new client welcome kit, and new client reassurance emails. So if you want to improve every stage of your client life cycle, but don't have the time to do it yourself, you can learn more at jamesamplifier.com slash demo. Delegation, I think, Nick, is a productivity shot in the arm, right? We only have so many minutes in the day. We only have so much energy in the tank. The more you can empower others, delegate to them, you're empowering yourself. You're, I feel like, lifting all boats around you. So, again, get it off your desk ASAP. Hey, everyone. Welcome back to Answering Legal's Everything Except the Law podcast. I am, as I am always, your host, Nick Worker. If this is your first time tuning in, this is the podcast where we share expert advice on all the parts of running a law firm that attorneys weren't exactly trained for back in law school. Now, we don't want to waste too much time with our opening today because this episode is going to be all about how to better manage your time. Um, and here to help us, uh, here to help advise us on that subject is attorney Christopher Early. Christopher is truly an expert when it comes to time management for lawyers and has previously shared his experience and expertise as an author for the ABA and as a columnist for the Massachusetts Lawyers Weekly. You do not want to miss out on the tips he's going to share with us today, and neither do I because I waste a lot of time like I'm doing right now. But Christopher, thank you so much for being here. Nick, I appreciate the opportunity. Thank you so very much. It means a lot. Thank you. I got to say I'm very selfishly invested in this because uh, I feel like I can learn a lot from you. Um, and so let's jump in. Uh, lawyers have always, I think, had a very complicated relationship with time and, and specifically time management. Uh, what's your relationship with time been like over the years of running your firm? And, uh, and was there a specific point where you knew you needed to start making time management a higher priority? No, good question, Nick. Um, I'm, I think I probably speak for a lot of lawyers listening to this that, you know, we are in a very demanding, stressful, high pressure uh, profession. There's a lot of a lot of things on our shoulders that we have to deal with. And for, for many, many years, I was um, kind of running, running around with my hair on fire uh, in terms of, you know, managing everything. My business was growing, which is a good problem to have, but that meant time was shrinking. And I, I figured this is not sustainable. It doesn't bring me joy or my family joy for me to be, you know, um, kind of running all over the place with my, with my head cut off. So I figured there's got to be a better way. And I figured, what better way than to kind of be intentional with my time and try to control it for my advantage, uh, for my client's advantage. And I find that, you know, once that, once I became more sensitive to managing my time, more intentional with it, good things have only come about from that sort of, you know, mindset shift of, of, of really being careful with time because it, it obviously uh, vanishes very easily if we're not careful with it. That's interesting. Um, because, uh, I find that, and I love that saying, like running around with your hair on fire, because I always say I'm running around like a like a chicken with my head cut off, which I, I think you were also alluding to. Both um, at the yeah, same right? time. It feels like that. Yeah, my hair is on fire and I'm also a chicken um, who's been decapitated quite recently. Yes. Um, but being intentional, I've never thought about. Okay, so in a, in, in a recent webinar I, I listened to um, of yours, I heard you go in depth on, on a time management practice known as the 80-20 rule. Um, can you tell us what the 80-20 rule is, um, how to use it, and uh, 
and yeah. For sure. I mean, I think that's what it's all about is, you know, and this is something that I definitely didn't invent, but the anti 20 rule basically for anyone who isn't familiar with it says that uh, uh, 80% of your results come from 20% of the effort, right? So for me, that was another sort of game changer. And 80 20 is another way of looking at, you know, busy work versus productive work. You know, busy work, I feel, doesn't make us money or provide job satisfaction, but uh, productive work does. Productive work makes us feel satisfied, feel gratified, feel fulfilled that we're being truly productive, right? So when you look at your time, look at it as an investment, right? Because we're investing, we invest our dollars, we invest our time, it should be no different of a, uh, an analysis. So 80-20, right? Is this task that I'm doing, is this productive or is this, or is this busy? If it's productive, that's um, that's the 20% um, that gives me 80% of my results, right? And you flip that. Is this busy work? Is this 80% um, that brings me 20% of my results? So the more sensitive you become to really figuring out, all right, is this a good use of my time, right? Is this productive or is this just simply busy? I feel, you know, back to, um, you know, that metaphor of running around with your, with your hair on fire. I mean, that's a lot of that is busy work. You're just trying to keep, keep the balls in the air and juggling without them falling. But, you know, we'll get into delegation. I'm sure other things we can, we can t- maximize and, and manipulate for our advantage and our office's advantage for managing our time. But I would encourage anyone on this call to, to be very, again, sensitive to, you know, is what I'm doing right now, is this busy or productive? If it's productive, it's a good use of my time. It's a high value use of my time. If it's busy, I got to put it downstream. I have to, I have to delegate it off my desk. To someone who's probably more qualified than I to begin with, you know, to, to handle that task um, and actually wants to do that task. That for me is kind of a busy task. It doesn't help my office out. So I didn't know the answer to the question, but uh, I, as soon as you said what the 80-20 rule is, I thought of, I'm on LinkedIn and, and Twitter and Instagram a lot. And I follow a lot of influencers about like business and all that stuff. And I read recently that uh, Lionel Messi who's a very famous, world famous, arguably the best soccer player alive or football, depending on whatever, you know, you call it, um, only runs out of a 90 minute match, 12 minutes and 27 seconds on average, something like that. Um, but it's those 12 minutes that make him the greatest soccer player in the world. And, uh, and I, I thought about what you were saying, like, is it productive? Uh, 20% of the work that I do is going to pr- give me 80% of the results. And uh, I remember a couple of years ago, I was getting, I was getting a, like an annual review at my job. And somebody said to me, you are really good at finding things to do, but then you take them all on and, uh, and you turn them into tasks, like daily tasks for yourself. And you create all this busy work where you should be looking to um, like, get rid of those tasks, right? They might be necessary tasks, but what are you creating for yourself that's holding you back from finding the next thing to do? Um, So I think that's a good segue into talking about delegation, which is obviously um, an extremely important skill for lawyers to learn. So I want to ask your opinion on which tasks you think that those who are running growing law firms should strongly consider delegating knowing nothing about their situation, what should they, what should they delegate? Everything. <laughs> but can I just quickly, quickly just circle back? Cause you brought up a good point about Lionel Messi. You do just, whatever super quick. you want. I appreciate. So I think it comes back, you know, 80, 20, just moving the needle, right? Is that work advancing me and my life forward? Or am I just on a treadmill? Am I just going to pull my hair out and become unhappy just doing busy work that's stressing me out, stressing the people around me out again, always when we're looking at the time in, be, have an investor mindset. Is this moving the needle? Is it being productive? And that messy analogy is really interesting because he's so far more successful on the soccer pitch than almost every other player in the world. And yet he's, he's sounds from what you described, and it's not surprising from what you described, he's so effective with, you know, not running around like a chicken, you know, going crazy, but, but rather, you know, chicken with his head cover, but rather an intelligent investor of his soccer energy, his soccer stamina. He only has so much in the tank. So obviously he's doing something right, but that shouldn't be any different than attorneys, right? We, we can operate with the same mindset of, of saving our energy, saving our 
our brain power for those things that help us score the goals, right? And, and, and win championships, <laughs> you know, but uh, whatever it may be, a trial or a victory for a client. Um, but in sports, it's, it's sort of different than law. We want to win and we want to be successful and be satisfied. I'm so glad. I'm sorry to cut you off, but I'm so glad that you received the message of that quote because I loved I am, it. I'm the king of misquoting things, though. <laughs> so I'm sure that I got that wrong in some capacity or in some sense. But as long as the message got delivered, I'm I'm happy. No, I think it was an, an awesome point. It's so on. It's so on point what we're talking about, right? But sorry, I just want I digress for a second there. But back to you know delegation. I mean, what what should lawyers delegate? I mean, well, obviously we all have different setups, different practice areas, different priorities. But I'm a big believer in getting as much as I can off my desk uh, as I possibly can. I I do believe that there's people, you know, much better than me at these tasks that actually want to do these tasks. So why get in their way? Right. And I, you know, if there's something I would encourage anyone again on this call, there's something, I'm sure there's something everyone is doing today that they don't like doing and isn't again, moving the needle for their self, for themselves, their own, their practice. So delegate it. Right. But Nick, I don't think you can just blindly delegate to here, you know, you know, here, John, I need you to just bang out this motion. Thank you so much. No, you have to be really specific. I just went to a conference in New York City um, a few days ago, and it was a very, very successful nationally known personal injury attorney who was speaking before the group, one of the most successful in the country, owns multiple law firms. And he said, you never want to micromanage anybody, but you do want to micromanage delegation, right? When you delegate something, you want to sort of micromanage exactly how the delegated task should be performed and then get out of the way. Let the person run and do their thing with what you're delegating. So we can't just say, you know, here, John, again, you know, bang out this motion. Thank you so much. It's, you know, be clear, you know, I need this done this, this certain way, please. And at the end of the project, I need it, John, done. I, I would like it to look this way, please. And finally, you have to give a deadline. I need it by Friday at 2.30, right? How it should be done, how the finished product should look like. And by what time or date it needs to be done by that, you are in, in that way you're empowering the person you're delegating to to do it the right way, so that person can be most effective in in, in doing that that task or responsibility, and and you're satisfied too that so well, that worked out well. I just got that off my desk. Hey, what else is around here that I can get, get uh, delegate to to others? So delegation, I think Nick is a productivity shot in the arm. Right, we only have so many minutes in the day we have so much energy in the tank right back to the Lionel Messi analogy right I mean the guy's human we're all human here we can't we really can only get so much done in the day right but the more you can empower others delegate to them you're empowering yourself you're I feel like lifting all boats around you so again get it off your desk ASAP there's got to be something that everyone is doing that they have they have no business doing so let someone else do it but again micromanage the delegation be super clear because that's only fair to the person you're you're asking to do that job you can't just right it's 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 um it's delegation it's not you know abdication you're not ultimately we're in the hook is the attorney right it's our name on that file it's our name it's it's we who ultimately are the uh, the, the attorney for that client so we got to really be sensitive to to not you know abdicating responsibility right but but just delegating it um because ultimately we have ownership of that um and so that's super important. I feel like that's a cool catchphrase: delegation, not abdication. Um, I'm curious. This is for my own edification. Uh, say something is truly not time sensitive that you're delegating. Um, would you still give a deadline? And what is what's what's the purpose of the deadline? And uh, why why the deadline? Well. Because the work has to get done, right? So in the context of a law firm, you know, these are basically, these are case units that we're processing, right? No matter what type of case you're handling, we have a, a case that has a, a beginning point and an end point. So there's no advantage to us as, as the attorney, you know, business owners for this file to, to sort of sit around. So it's really in our best interest to, to keep, keep the file moving. So even if there is no deadline, we, we, we should have a deadline for that task to be done by so the, task, so the case itself 
stays on on track so we we can move the client's case as efficiently as possible um but i think the deadline is is important otherwise it could just be totally forgotten about entirely so we just want to again do everything we can to make sure that it's it's done as quick as possible but this goes back to um you know 80 20 not just for for the person uh Say, say, for example, me, right? I delegate something. That person has to be sensitive to time management as well, right? If I say, listen, you know, John, I need the that motion, you know, done for Friday at 2 30. Well, that then John can manage his time effectively. Say, okay, this has to be done. So it's sort of consistent with the whole big picture of managing time that, you know, we run according to a, a tight schedule here and we have the clients expect things from us. So we, not just me, but everyone has in my office, manage your time well. And if uh, and, and the sooner we can get that project done and, and the better, but if that's a low value task for John, right? If, I keep saying John, I'm sorry, but just as an example, you know, if that's a low value task for him and it doesn't move the needle for any of us, then I I would, uh, once he comes into the office, edu- you know, onboard him, educate him as best as I am able to um, on how to manage his time, right? So then he can make sure that task gets done in the most efficient way possible, um, as, as quickly as, as possible. We will be right back after this short ad. Who doesn't want to be a successful attorney with a busy practice, but still have that life? Having those lunch breaks, playing golf, going on vacation, answering legal allows you to. My name is Laura Pfeiffer Battalora. I'm an attorney founding member of the Battalora Law Group. Our headquarters is in Brooklyn, but we represent people all over the state of New York. The process of getting started with answering legal couldn't have been easier. It was so seamless. They're so efficient. The message will pop up on my phone. It'll pop up in my email. Answering legal allows me to have a personal life, a more balanced life, and it also helps me to be a better attorney. It saves time, it helps you grow your practice without you even realizing it. Getting started with Answering Legal is the best thing that we've ever done. It pays off in spades. It's been amazing. I couldn't live without them, <laughs> really. In, in, that, in, in the webinar I spoke about before, you also stated you're a big believer in calendaring and time blocking. Uh, can you tell us why that is and, and tell us a little bit about your calendaring process? Sure, I'm a big believer in the power of the calendar. I mean, we all have our different rhythms, right? So for me, I have a nice, uh, it, it makes sense for me in my brain to plan out the week on, on, on Sunday. So on Sunday morning before the kids get up, I will block out the week as best as I can, right? And, and that, that again, requires intentionality, requires effort to, to get ahead of the week, right? Because if we don't control the week, it's going to control us. So let's preemptively get front of the week and manage what we're going to do, how we're going to do it. But this comes down to, again, I keep saying 80, 20, right? What's productive work? If it's truly busy work, it shouldn't be on my calendar, right? Um, it's, I, I got to get to someone else, but it's productive work that I am, uh, good at doing right that's within my wheelhouse my wheelhouse is super thin and small there's only so many things out there uh because the vast majority are better better for me to delegate to those who are far superior to me in those getting those things done but for that tiny slice of things that i do that that are that are truly productive for me i want to i want to i want to maximize the week i want to i want to squeeze that lemon as dry as i can of, of productive work so Sunday mornings for me, Nick, I just will look at the week and say, okay, Tuesday, you know, it's 1245, going to work on that 30 minute marketing campaign or, or you know, whatever it is, assign it a window and make sure it gets done. And I, I, I really, I, I'm a, I love time management. I love you know, talking about it, learning about it because there's so much to learn, I find. And, and uh, there's a, uh, there's a gentleman by the name of Brian Tracy. I don't know if people on the call have heard of him, but he's a time management guru, success speaker. And his, his phrase is eat the frog, meaning, you know, eat the frog, do the, do that thing at the beginning of your day that you dre- you're dreading doing. You don't want to do it. You know, Nick, you, you just, you're looking at your calendar like, I don't want to freaking do that on that day, but eat the frog, right? Put it down the calendar. So then it gets done uh, when it needs to get done. For me, I like to kind of, you know, again, eat the frog, 
first thing in the morning, get that discovery out of the way, get that motion, that uh, whatever it may be. And so if that's on the calendar for say, you know, Wednesday at 8 a.m., it's going to get done because I've made a commitment to myself. I've become, you know, I'm intentional and, 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 and put that down. So it's going to get done. And just one other small idea, which to me sort of was fairly uh, substantial, this thing called Parkinson's law. And from what I understand, Parkinson's law says that time expands to the degree in which we allow it to. For example, if you say, you know, drafting that complaint will take me two hours, it'll take you two hours. But if you, if you say, I'm going to you know, do that in an hour and a half, there's a really good chance your brain will, will anticipate and execute and getting it done in an hour and a half. So be careful the time parameters you put on projects and tasks or whatever you're doing in the week. Try to narrow that down a little bit. And I, I can practically you know, assure you that it will get done, that condensed time. You've just saved half an hour, hour, two hours, whatever it is. You've just become more productive, become more lean, more efficient with your time. But I kind of went off on, the, on that. But just back to your original, original question about, about calendaring, time blocking, Maybe that's Saturday afternoon for you or whatever, Friday afternoon for the following week. Just give that, you know, be, uh, again, sensitive to getting the week started on the right foot. You'll feel empowered. You'll feel in control. You'll feel so productive because it's on the calendar. It's going to get done. I've, 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 I'm making myself accountable to get that done. And it's going to feel good. I'm going to just knock that out, want the next thing and, and have a really good week and, and, and leave work Friday knowing that I just had a, kick butt kind of week you know eat the frog i think eat i'm frog. gonna feel that eat it it's that and that's not me that that's brian tracy right that's definitely not me but it's just it's very visceral right it kind of sticks with you yeah because i don't really want to eat a frog <laughs> I totally none of us do it. but we have to yeah <laughs> that's interesting uh and i like so i've never heard of parkinson's law but I think anybody who just heard you explain uh, that principle can definitely identify with the time that they said, this is going to take me X amount. And then you're coming right up and, uh, oh, I finished it in the exact amount of time that I said I would. And uh, it's sort of like a self-fulfilling prophecy. And, uh, and I got to say that that phenomenon happens to me all the time. If I say, oh, this campaign will take me, you know, give me an hour, I'll get it done in an hour. Well, oftentimes, right up to an hour, 50 minutes, 55, something like that. Um, wow. That's interesting. I'm going to have to Google that. And, and, uh, wow, very interesting stuff. So I want to talk about another, like, a what I, what I consider for attorneys to be a major day killer, uh, just a time stealer, uh, especially for those with limited receptionist staff and obviously near and dear and true to my heart is the phone. Mm -hmm. Uh, do you have any tips uh, for lawyers on limiting the amount of time that they spend on the phone every day? Uh, yeah. So the phone is, is a time vampire, right? I didn't come up with that phrase. I, I've read it somewhere, but it's so true. The time will bleed. I'm sorry. The phone will bleed you dry of your time. It'll, it'll steal from you and rob from you. So if, if, if anyone takes anything, anything from this call, you can just reframe your sort of your 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 view of the telephone and its usefulness to you. Um, I have found the more unavailable I become, the more productive I become, and the more the people, ironically, respect my time. Now I'm obsessed with client service, obsessed with you know I I want you to be a raving fan, right? As the client, I want you to just. Shout from the roof, rooftops, Chris. Really, you know, he he's he's the attorney that helped me, right? I want you to be so happy, but I can't be available for you twenty four seven when you call, right? It's not like you know, I'm working on a client's file, and then another client calls. I just have to sort of like pivot away and get out of that sort of deep. We could so, you know maybe talk about this um, later. Is um, a flow state of concentration. But suppose you're in a you know you're in a flow state. You're you're focusing on 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 Sally's file. And then Joseph is calling you out of the blue. It's like you, you have to literally turn your brain off of that concentrated task and pivot to the phone. You're not prepared for it for his phone call. I mean, Joseph wasn't on the calendar. So Nick, this is what I do that's been very helpful is that I don't take unscheduled phone, any inbound unscheduled phone calls. 
only if the person, it may sound kind of funny, but it works. Only if the person calls, if they say apples, if the person says the word apples to my receptionist, my receptionist knows that's a planned call and that the, the call should be forwarded to me. Otherwise, this, come, this goes right back to the beginning of our, our show we're talking about with your running around with your hair on fire. So the phone is a, is a major tam, a time vampire. Another thing, you know, if you have a client that's notorious, just very chatty and you're just very talkative, when you get on the phone, I think it's important to control, you know, you're the professional, you're the attorney, they're, they're paying. So, and you're the person they defer to you for, for counsel. So you gotta, you gotta really watch the clock with the phone. If someone's calls and they're very, very chatty, just it, it's, it can be helpful to say, Hey, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm excited to talk with you just a heads up by five minutes. So, you know, how can I help? Right. It just sort of requires people to get to the point, right. Cause the clock is ticking. We have, hundreds for me hundreds of other clients that are relying on me and my office to work on the case so that that 35 minute call was just cut down to five minutes and no one's going to protest oh no it's going to be you know we're going to drive for 20 minutes you know no no one says that everyone you know plays by the rules because that's reasonable um you know i can't just call my doctor out of the blue and say hey you know doctor here's my situation it's, i'm not going to get to my doctor and again, I know it sounds kind of odd, but it's true. The harder people, the, the harder it is to get to you, the more people appreciate and value your time, right? And so people, it's sort of, for lack of a better word, trains people to get to the point, you know, to, to, to not just expect you to be on call. So again, this, this, I know for a lot of attorneys, and for me, when I first heard about it, it was somewhat, you know, are you, what are you, nuts? I'm not going to schedule calls. Try it. Try it today, tomorrow, this week. Just try it in your practice. And I promise you, productivity will soar because that, that phone is, is sucking you dry of your time and, it's, and it does it every day of the week, right? Control that as best you can. Um, set parameters in place. Um, and again, if I, if, I, you know, if, if I call someone and I get their voice, I, I do need to speak to them. It's important. I'll say, hey, you know, when you call me back, just say the word apples and that, that way they get to me. And I just, one other thing is if you have staff in your office, your staff are really, um, I empower my staff to sort of put walls up around me, right? They're my sort of time keepers. It's, you know, they guard my time because they're the ones who, 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 who help me to be productive, right? It's about time management, right? If I'm not managing my time, that means my, my, I'm doing a disservice to myself and my staff. So my staff knows that, you know, part of the responsibility is to help me guard my time and put up those gates as my gatekeepers. Um, and then, you know, when that call is scheduled, I'm going to give you my full undivided attention because this is on the calendar. I'm focused. I've, I've just looked at your file. I'm abreast on what's occurring, where we're at, and I can have a really good talk with you. Otherwise, it's not fair to you that I'm not, I'm not, I'm not prepared for your call when you just call me randomly. And Nick, I've had a, you know, I can, I literally count two lawyers in the past. I think I started about a year ago doing this. I've had two lawyers who are going to say, no, you're, you're, you, you know, that's kind of arrogant. You think so highly of yourself. Well, it's sort of arrogant to think I'm just looking at the phone ready, ready for your call that very second. Like, you know, we have a lot of clients here. We're busy growing practice. So those, those two attorneys, we're sort of selfish themselves to assume that we're just, you know, I'm just ready for the call, but lawyers, clients, right? Anyone that I deal with by far, you know, the, 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 the vast, vast, vast majority of people, they get it and they respect it. Because I respect, you know, if you told me that's your, you know, Nick, that's your time management policy. I was like, you know, I totally understand it, right? We have to sort of appreciate each other's time. And, 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 and I, I think that's a, a <clears throat> very important. To, to definitely respect each other's time. And most people fall in that. But again, I would encourage anyone, try it out, give it a shot. You will not regret it. But you have to be religious about it. You have to be somewhat militant. You can't just like put your toe in the water with time management. Oh, you know, that didn't work. No, it requires some pain probably initially to change some bad habits. But you'll be so very happy you did. And things will soar with your productivity. I am a people pleaser. Um, so I find it very difficult to tell people like harsh, not necessarily harsh, but like difficult to um, verbalize truths. Um, so if somebody calls me up and, and I, I'll personally find it difficult to like disappoint that person by telling them, you know, I only have 10 minutes. Um, 
but I like the way that you put it. And, and, and I'm a big mindset guy. I have to change my mindset before I can change the action. Um, it's, it's, I can't practice the thing and get the results before I understand um, where I'm headed. So what you've just done for me is, is you sort of gave me permission to respect people's time who have made the effort to make an appointment with me. Um, so like you said, I, wouldn't, I, I can't call my doctor and just have a chat with him about what's going on with me. I have to make an appointment and I go see my doctor. If I was at the doctor having a conversation with him in person for my appointment and he took a phone call to chit chat with somebody, I'd be pretty upset. Um, Great point. I'd, feel, I'd feel that my time was, was disrespected. So it's, it's, almost, it's, it's almost the exact opposite of how we view it, right? Where, oh, I'm being disrespectful, disrespectful to that person by ignoring that phone call. No, what I'm doing is I'm being respectful of other people's time who maybe waited in line. You know, um, this is hopefully what we're talking about is like a democratic process here where everybody's got the same fair shot. Um, and nobody's got special treatment because nobody's really special. Uh, and what, you've, you've done me a great service because uh, that's, that's how I used to look at it. It's like, oh, I got to fit everybody in. I can't tell everybody. Else. No, it's, it's not necessarily the truth. That's, that's the mindset before I understood um, the reality. I do want to talk about this uh, because, again, selfishly, I am very, very much so addicted to my email. Um, and you have described yourself as a recovering email addict. Um, Full so I blown. Might, I, I might, I might identify as an email addict, not necessarily recovering yet. Um, <laughs> can you tell us a, a little bit about the struggles that you've had with checking emails, and uh, and like what happened? How 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 you've how you've how how have you recovered? Well, you just used a, a word that's near and dear to my heart, mindset. You used it a couple of times. This, is, we're, this whole discussion is around mindset, right? And my mindset around email was a rather compulsive one. It's like, got to check it, got to check. I'm you know, got to look at email, but that's classic busy work. You go back to the 80-20 thing, right? There's nothing productive about reading emails, sending emails, monitoring email. You're wasting your time and it's adding up a lot each day. So this again requires, there's pain here, there's pain and change. So um, and this doesn't come from me. This is, you know, brilliant people who, who, who study this stuff say, you know, check it twice a day. There's nothing pressing, you know, at least in, in, in my line of work, right? A personal injury lawyer, it's, things can wait. There's nothing, you know, catastrophic that's going to happen. You know, just a quick, a quick aside here, Nick, I went on vacation uh, to Disney with my family about a year ago last summer. And I, uh, and I, and I didn't check my email for about four days. And that's me. It was like four weeks nothing happened. Everything was fine. Right. But in, in my head, I was like, I said to my wife, oh man, I checked my email. I'm, I'm you know, nervous, freaking out. My wife said, it's fine. And lo and behold, no catastrophes. Everything was, was fine. So if this is the same thing as the phone, it's no difference. It's, it's sucking up your time. So just, you know, check it, you know, twice a day for some may, may seem kind of, you know, sp 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 minimal, right. Extreme just whittle it down. Right. I think it's, I think it can be very addictive behavior checking that you know, we want that dopamine hit, right. The dopamine hit of getting that email we were waiting for. <laughs> I think we can all relate. Right. And if you can wean yourself off of that and, 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 and really get off of the inbox and focus on the 80, 20 stuff, focus on productive stuff, right. Have a mindset of, you know, I'm an, I'm an investor of my time. Right? That's my mindset. I'm, in, I'm investing my time today. Is that a good use of my time on email? Probably not. No, I'm not saying abandon email, right? I mean, clients eventually, lawyers just say, you know, where the heck are you? you disappeared. No, I mean, but just whittle it down, taper it down. Just, a, a, I think a small twist on the dial, a small turn on that dial in the other direction, right? Of less email checking, I think can have a major impact and, and, and make you feel good because you're going to be locked into some more uh, productive work that email takes you away from frequently, I find twice a day to me checking my email twice a day sounds impossible um and i'm i'm in marketing right my role here technically is i'm the director of marketing um which we're, we're kind of in the same business with, with most lawyers is uh 
I generate leads and interest in the company. And uh, for all my office fans out there, I like to say that my, uh, my lead infrastructure is like a woof, uh, which is where uh, Ryan, the tech guy, invents the thing that like uh, somebody tries to reach you and you get a simultaneously uh, a phone call, a text message, an email, a fax. Um, I don't know, whatever Wolf st- stood for. I might be getting that wrong. I told you I'm the king of misquoting things. <laughs> um, so all Office fans can roast me. But uh, <laughs> it, I get a dopamine hit every time that like a, like a new, like, a, like a, somebody's interested in the service or they call or this and, and I get all these notifications and I check it and I refresh it constantly. Um, but I might not be, and, and, and this is where I'm going with this, I might not be able to, to all of a sudden in one, in one fell swoop cut down to two a day, but I can, I can do what you said. I can turn back the dial where um, when I'm in a flow state, just X out of the email, and then I can open it back up later and not see the notification pop up. Um, just little things like that in order to be more intentional with my time um, seems like what we're, what we're talking about here. Um, and I want to ask, because you're teaching me a lot. This is very, I'm enjoying myself. I, I'm getting a lot of selfish things done here. Um, can you tell us a little bit about some of your personal favorite time management tools? Absolutely. Can we just go super quick back to the email thing? And I, I hear you on every- how radical it seems. What, I've, what I'm trying to sort of scheme up is to delegate my inbox to someone else. There are thousands of people, hundreds of thousands perhaps across the globe that would be very happy to get paid to monitor email. Now it brings up, you know, challenges, of course, you know, how does that work, right? I mean, how, how, does, how does someone actually, how do you delegate your inbox to someone? Well, I know a lot of people would do it. So I know it can be done, but it's one of those things where that's just gonna talk about the dial. I mean, that would be massive. No, because then you're then you have peace of mind, and, and I don't mean just hire any random VA or you know any any random executive assistant, assistant wh- whoever. But I mean, like assuming you have the right person in, in play for that position, let that person run with it and give and give up your inbox. I'm trying to do that, and that's that's something on my list, right? But this ties. This is all sort of to me coherent and cohesive, right? Delegation, time management, productivity. This is all one holistic mindset approach right i mean this is all uh, this is all consistent these things we're talking about so you've reminded me i gotta delegate my inbox because that's you know we're always you know there's a there's a principle called have you ever heard the word kaizen kaizen it's i i I, it's this principle of slow continuous daily improvement right slowly you know we're not talking about major it's hard to do big things every day and just have such mammoth impact in your life but it's much more feasible to to have more um rhythmic daily small consistent tweaks that improve things so this this is another i don't know in relation to time management how it is but if you can just sort of make well i think it relates to time management if you can just slowly each day tweak your time management um to to your benefit right as opposed to your detriment I think that can be super, super, super helpful, but I'm sorry for that digression. Time management tools, my number one time management tool are my team members, right? Again, they're my gatekeepers. I'm only as good as, as the team members that help me and, and the business. So those, those awesome rock stars who are on my team, they are my most important time management um, um, support, supporters, basically. You know, they, they help me do what I do without them. I'm I'm not going anywhere fast. Um, you know, it's not very sophisticated, but Google Calendar for me, uh, I'm, not a, I'm not a real tech expert, but Google Calendar is fantastic. Little things like, um, this is sort of an offshoot of that, but Calendly, right? For calendar invites, p- clients love that. They love to be empowered to be, to, 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 to be able to make appointments uh, with, with you at a date and time that, that, that suits them, that fits them. So that's a nice tool. Um, but there are, there's something, this is a, this is a, a slight digression, but it's called Pomodoro's technique. Pomodoro is a, is, is, Pomodoro's technique is a time management principle. I think it basically says, you know, work for 45 minutes or an hour, take 10 minutes off and then 
but I encourage people to Google it, but there's an app you can put on your phone for the Pomodoro technique. It encourages, you know, committing to a task then taking some time off, right? Getting up, walking around, coming back to that task, then you're refreshed, right? Um, but those are some time management tools that, that I have found, but there's no shortage of them. But again, I think Nick, it all comes back to the mindset, right? How are we viewing time? How intentional, how sensitive are we to the passage of time? Those things I think, those things I think are, are, are very, very super important. And also automation, right? There's somebody, you know, a CRM can automate client updates. That's a time management technique or, or platform you can utilize, right? In any business to just, you know, feed your clients, your customers with, with answers to questions that maybe per, they're definitely percolating inside their head. They'll, they'll love you for it, right? You're, you're being proactive. That's going to cut down the amount of phone calls, emails that you get. The more you can enter the customer client's head, conversation that's going on in their head already, that's a good time management technique also. So these little things, again, Kaizen, right? Small tweaks consistently over time. I feel like massive, massive changes. You talk about moving the needle. Well, if you do these things every day, the needle moves massively in, in the direction you want it to go in. And, and, if, and if, if you're not sensitive to time and time management, I think it can go the other way. The needle can go the other way and really kind of be very heavy on your shoulders. And, and that's what we started with, right? That's what for me brought me full circle say, oh, this is not working. I'm stressed out. I'm unhappy. This is not a recipe for long-term success. So I, I wanted to look for a better way. And I think it's an ongoing process, right? Saving our time. Once it's gone, Nick, it's gone, right? So we have to be careful. <laughs> definitely gone. I can definitely tell you that. Um, but yeah, I love that Kaizen principle that as long as you're focusing on, on making small improvements, the whole is affected by that. Um, so in your purview, what would you say are the biggest benefits that attorneys will see from effective time management over time? Um, like why, why should lawyers be making this effort to change their, their usual way, their, their, their modus operandi, so to speak, and, and follow the advice that you've shared today? Honestly, to me, the big picture is mental health because this, this profession is rife with depression, anxiety, and rightfully so. I mean, there's so much pressure on, on lawyers. It, it's, it's, it's out of control. So for me, this is about making more dollars. It's not about going on vacations. This is about my mental health and just being present, right? And being um, in the moment and being, um, again, I've said a thousand times, but intentional, right? This doesn't come about by chance. You don't get you don't get smart with, with your time just by happenstance. So that to me is the big picture because lawyers are going bonkers every day and, and rightfully so there's a lot on our shoulders, but that's not an excuse to allow things to continue the way they are. So for me, it's about mental health. It's about promoting my happiness, my, 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 my family's happiness, and then our clients happiness. We want our clients to be happy, but at the end of the day, it's my family, my team members, myself, that's my, 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 my highest priority, right? And then obviously the clients we serve. But if we're if we're going bonkers each day, how are we effective counselors? How, how are we effective advocates for our clients, right? Our clients are owed this. They're owed us to be present on the phone, us to be present when we're working on that file to be in a flow state, to be effective. It's what we're paid to do. Otherwise, the client's getting gypped. So I think it's just if, crucial. To, to, it's not really about time management, but it's about being, you know, managing our, our, our mental health, our sanity, because if we're not careful, that can be compromised by the demands of the job. So I think in all, and this is not just lawyers, just any business, any, any human being, I think, right? No matter if you're working or not, or whatever the heck you do, manage your time, don't get stressed out, or, you know, stress always occurs, obviously, right? But I just mean, do that, which, that to which you can do to put those walls up. To, to, to keep you in a, in, in a good mental state. That's what I think it's the big picture for me at least. I, I feel like you were talking directly to me uh, <laughs> or directly at me. Um, I don't want to do you, that. No, no, I'm, <laughs> I'm only teasing. Um, but Chris, Fred, I'd, I'd like to thank you so much for joining me on the show today. Um, big thank you to all of our listeners. Uh, we hope you enjoyed this conversation. We'll be back with another episode of Everything Except the Law soon. Uh, in the link, uh, in the description, will be links to all of uh, Christopher Early's uh, websites, contact information, and anywhere you can get a hold of him. Um, be sure to check out previous episodes of the show on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Anchor, the Answering Legal YouTube channel. See you next time, everyone. <laughs>